This is part four of my leadership series on the eight pillars of leadership. We've already covered uh, inspiring and leading yourself, transformational beliefs, intentionality, healthy relationships, speaking life, faith-filled decision-making. And today we're going to be talking about the culture of gladness and empowering empowering others and building big people. Now, these eight pillars are what I have used for years in, in training people, uh, raising people up in on my teams that I have here in Redding, California, the leader development program that we use through the Global Legacy, so much of what we're sharing in these sessions on leadership. Uh, have been used to bless people around the world. And I am, am just uh, excited today about these two, the culture of gladness and empowerment. And by the way, if you're looking for something to do September through December and a personal growth venture, you know, we spend money on uh, physical fitness which is rightly so, but the greater fitness that we need is in our beliefs and in our influence. And so I'll be doing a four-month online uh, mentorship using these eight pillars, going more in-depth uh, on that. It's made for people who are on the go. One or two hours a week is what we estimate the time. You can find out more info on it in ignitinghopeacademy.com. My wife, Wendy, is also doing another mentorship that's separate to this as well. So if you're looking for four months of growth, it's coming up. But regardless, if you want to do that or not, let's get into these pillars today, the, the culture of gladness and empowerment, and empowerment building big people. Now, Hebrews 1.9 says, Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness above all his companions. Jesus was the most glad being on the planet. Jesus created a culture of gladness around him. Great leaders, great parents, great influencers create a culture of gladness. The Bible says a merry heart is good like medicine. It's medicine for our bodies. It's medicine for our souls. It's medicine for the environments uh, that we are a part of. I remember when someone shared that joy was one third of the kingdom. It says in Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not about meat and drink, but about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And they, I heard someone say, joy is one third of the kingdom. I thought, I don't think so. I don't think it's that important. But now I'm convinced. I am convinced that when we pursue joy, and we're not passive about it, that it's kind of like a secret door uh, in, into growing up. <laughs> I've done a, a podcast and blog, and it's part of my book, uh, Igniting Joy in 40 Days. It's a powerful devotional on joy. So if you're looking for something, and by the way, that devotional book is something you just lay around the house, open it up to any page and you're going to get an injection of joy. But I, I, I wrote a devotional that's in there. There's also a podcast, like I said. Uh, why, Steve, are you not radically joyful now? Now, that's one of the most powerful questions we can ask ourselves. Why am I not radically joyful now? And obviously, uh, we're not laughing all the time. We weep with those who weep. There's seasons of uh, 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 of mourning we've gone through, but it can't be a lifestyle. And that question of why we're not radically joyful, because there, there's never a convenient season. I end pretty much every podcast by saying the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I say, we don't need strength at the end of the battle. We need strength in the middle of the battle. And for everybody who's listening right now, today's probably not a good day to walk in radical joy for most of you. And I realize this, there's never a good time. It's what I call destination disease, where 
yep, I, I have in my subconscious thinking that I'm going to arrive at a certain place and then I'll be joyful. I'll arrive at a certain place in, in not being disappointed in myself or I'll arrive to a place where all the relationships around me are what I want them to be or I'll have all the money I need or there's no negative news in the media. <laughs> I don't verbalize that so much, but that's a subconscious thought. No. It's we ask why we're not joyful, we'll deal with a lot of stuff. We'll deal with uh, bad doctrine because you can't be joyful if you have a bad God concept and you're under an old covenant religious mindset. Focus more on works, you know, being uh, sin focused instead of righteousness focused, being guilt focused instead of forgiveness focused. Uh, not being love-focused from the fun. We can't be joyful with bad doctrine. We can't be joyful with bad identity beliefs, believing we're who our past experience says we are, believing we're who other people say uh, we are, believing we're who our feelings say we are. And, and so it will grow us up. It'll also grow us up in how we do relationships because it's very difficult to be joyful if we're selfish. <laughs> if we're selfish in our relationships, it's virtually, we can't be joyful. And so this culture, this leadership pillar, the culture of gladness, and then this overflows into <clears throat> teams uh, or families, that family that laughs together, stays together. The, the team that laughs together, stays together. And it has a priority on, on having some fun. It's one of the priorities. So you, you think about, wow, Steve, should this be really one of your pillars? Should uh, the culture of gladness, don't you think the others are... are more important than you just wanted to stick this in because you kind of, you're one of those joy guys. <laughs> now I'm convinced and I'm convinced as we grow in our influence, as we grow in our leadership, that this one is really, and I'll say it again, a secret door into personal maturity and a secret door into healthy relationships that we've already talked about. Wow. Hey, let's talk about the other one. Empowerment, building big people. I wrote a book called The Culture of Empowerment with my brother, Dr. Phil Backlund. We got a, a second version of that, The Culture of Empowerment Business and Organizational Version. And by the way, we're working on uh, creating structures for influencing businesses uh, and organizations, just keep your eye out for that here from Igniting Hope. But we take Bill Johnson's quote, Bill Johnson, senior leader at Bethel Church. Uh, he frequently says, my goal is not to build a big church, but to build big people. And that really reverberates <clears throat> in my spirit, you know, just in leadership and in what's my priority in leadership is my priority to accomplish tasks and goals and try to get people to cooperate with me to accomplish those goals and tasks. And certainly there's a level of, yeah, we need to have loyalty to us as the leaders, but even how to increase that loyalty is to be an empowering person who becomes an empowering leader. Because empowering people are more concerned about the total well-being of the people in their life than what they can do for them. It's a mindset. And so when you get into a leadership position, again, yeah, we have visions, we have goals, we have, uh, if we have a business, we have a bottom line uh, in finances that we want to accomplish. But I, I want to say to you that as we focus on developing people, and as we focus to be a place, uh, if we're a business or we're a church leader, where people want to kick the door down to try to work for us, 
to work under our leadership. That's really the goal. We get, the goal is, is that we get a reputation that if people get into our environment, that they're going to be developed and they're going to be part of a team and part of an organization that is making a, a great impact. They, they get to be a significant trib, a contributing part to make things better, but also they go to a higher level in, in their own development. It's a, a thinking win-win, a win for the organization and a win for the person. Now, I have people who want to be under my mentorship. I have so many people apply every year that we, I wish I could take everybody, but we can't. And, and so that is exciting to know, hey, people think, hey, I can be a part of what Steve's doing. It's going to develop me. Now, I also believe that those who come under the influence of what I'm doing even in these podcasts, get developed. You get developed in an incredible way. And, but I'm talking to people who also are making a difference. So many of you are already in leadership positions. So many of you are in places where you are developing people, where you have the heart. You wouldn't be listening to these podcasts if, if you were just seeing people as slaves to accomplish your will. <laughs> and so I'm just pouring a spiritual gasoline on the fire of empowerment. For others of you, this may be a new concept. Now, let me just give you a couple keys uh, in being an empowering person, creating a culture of empowerment, building big people. Well, it starts with beliefs. One of the greatest things that leaders do, that parents do, is believe in the people they lead or that they influence. We are called to believe in people higher than they believe in themselves. And people will tend to rise to the beliefs of the key people within their lives. So it starts with beliefs. It, it, it continues with the words we use. We, we go after our language because empowering people focus on speaking life. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we, we listen for words that are disempowering. And, and here's the thing. Who we believe we're talking to will determine the level of empowerment in our words. Whether it's a family member, whether it's ourself, whether we're a pastor of a church, uh, we're, we're teaching in front of people, Bible study, employees, who we believe we're talking to determines the level of empowerment in our words. If we think we're talking to great people, then our words are going to be different. You say, well, Steve, the people I'm around, they, they, they have a lot of issues. Well, okay. A again, in empowerment, people don't have equal opportunity or equal access to you. There's times where in businesses we let people go. But I'm talking about a principle here that where we see people according to their potential, not according to their past. It's prophetic. I not only want to prophesy over people, I want to see people prophetically. So we, we talk about beliefs, then we get into language, uh, then we create empowering structures where our meetings activate people. We're always thinking, how can I activate people? How can I train people? And empowering leaders are thinking of working themselves out of a job. When we have that mindset, then we're getting a training mindset where we can pass on to people what we have learned. So much more we could say about that. But this pillar, empowerment, building big people, is a mindset. Then it sets priorities in our calendar. It changes the dynamics of our one-on-one -on -one meetings, our team meetings, because what we're going to do is we're going to think, I want to build people and I want to release people. I want to give people opportunity to happen. I want to give people opportunity to influence the environment and feel significant. And I'm going to get a plan to do that. Wow. Hey, what a joy it has been to go through these eight pillars uh, of leadership. Again, we're going deeper into that 
starting September 11th for uh, four months. If you can't afford it, uh, it's $55 a month what we are, are charging for that. Uh, again, that's like four months of uh, work workouts. It's going to be powerful. If you've enjoyed these, uh, it's going to go deeper. Uh, tell somebody else about it. Again, if you can't afford it, let us know. We don't want finances to be a reason that nobody can be a part of this. My, my, my. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast. And again, I've already said it. We're here. <laughs> we, I, well, actually, I've said this. I was going to talk about hope, but I'll talk about joy first. We're here to just stir up your joy. And I believe even what I said about the culture of gladness has done that. But then we're also here at Igniting Hope Ministries to ignite your hope. There's, there, there's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. Our hope level determines our influence level, and he was the most hope has the most influence. Increasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth. Our hopelessness about a problem is almost always a bigger problem than the problem. <laughs> God loves to partner with unreasonably optimistic people. The Lord said, Stephen, Wendy, I give you permission to be hopeless about anything I'm hopeless about. Never once have we heard, God, are you hopeless about that? Never once have we heard, yes, I am. That situation's so bad, even prayer is pointless. What a blessing it is to just spend some time with you today. And, and I, I just, as I, I pray over you, I'm hearing, I'm hearing these words. The Lord is releasing fresh keys to unlock your own destiny and others. Jesus said in Matthew 16, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I see that God's identifying keys. Certainly all of these eight pillars could be called a key. But I am hearing that the Lord is releasing revelation to you of key keys. <laughs> especially in your relationships. And I just thank you, Father, for the listeners who are listening, those who are watching on our YouTube channel, this podcast. I thank you for your blessing over each one. And I, I know that you're in a season right now of increased revelation, increased health in your relationships, increased courage and increased joy of the Lord. Hey, again, if you like these podcasts, why don't you tell somebody else about it? If you want to connect with us, go to ignitinghope.com, ignitinghopeacademy.com. We're thankful you're a part of our Igniting Hope family. God bless.